Well, greetings all you folks out there. I have a confession to make. I have proclaimed that Led Zeppelin has long been my favorite band. And for a number of years that has been the case. And I think it still will be the case. But for many years before that, I was a KISS fan. I had been introduced to KISS around 1975, around the time the Alive album was released. We had two teenage brothers who lived below us in our apartment in Brooklyn, Marty and Billy. And Marty and Billy were major KISS fans. And uh, I would sometimes open my window in my room when I was really little just to hear the Bronson Brothers listening to their KISS albums. And when I go down to visit them, they would be listening to their KISS albums and putting together model cars and trucks and planes and stuff like that. And before we moved in, with my grandparents and uncle in the Rockaways in 1977, Marty and Billy were like the older brothers I never had. And uh, I liked the Kiss songs that I heard because I thought they were catchy. Their image was a little bit intimidating for a little kid, four or five, six years old, to uh, see on an album cover, but they were intriguing to me as much as they were imposing. And what I liked was that they enjoyed a genuinely superhero alter ego persona. They could go out in public without costumes or makeup and not be recognized. Even by the few people who did recognize them and would take pictures of them, the news media shied away from publishing pictures of the KISS members incognito. So that was really very interesting. You know, I mean, try that now with everybody having cameras on their phones. Can't get away with stuff like that. That's part of the reason why I wear this thing. Uh, I don't want to be recognized immediately. Uh, maybe eventually, but not immediately. Uh, I like to go about my business, keeping my head down, my mouth shut. And I sing very much in public, you know. And for many years, I was a Kiss fan. In the 80s, when I started playing drums, I started buying the albums from their back catalog, as well as the current ones as they came out. And even at their lowest point, I still found myself rather enjoying their music. And I was very happy when I found out they were going to conduct a reunion tour in the 1990s, although I never got to see it, with original members and costumes and makeup and such. I felt, wow, my band is back. Look at this, huh? You know. And I remained a KISS fan, a very loyal one, until I heard what Gene Simmons had to say about people who feel suicidal. Uh, if you want to go kill yourself, go kill yourself. Now, the thing is, Gene may have meant it differently. But I took it to heart. Because as much as my parents loved my brother and I, their jealousy bled through everything they did for us. Uh, my parents loved us. They gave us clothing, food medicine, shelter, and toys as we needed it and very often as we might profess to want it. But their jealousy just came through everything and it undermined and ultimately ruined our relationship with them. They ultimately did not want us to succeed in life because they just got married and had kids, figuring that everything would work itself out. And it didn't. The presence of my brother and I only worsened my parents' marriage. And my brother and I, independently of each other, took it out on ourselves. And when Gene said that, 
Gene, you said this, and it was just very insensitive for you to say something like that. Because there are many KISS fans like me who looked up to you and we wanted to be a part of something. And what better part to be of than, than a KISS? And I, uh, I listened to your statement over and over again. And I understand that you had it very difficult when you were growing up. And you recognized and took advantage of the opportunities that the United States presented to you. And I will say that your mother is probably the most remarkable woman who ever lived, considering what she had to go through. And she brought you into the world and pointed you in the right direction uh, into your adulthood. If my mother or father, for that matter, were as remarkable as yours, I might feel that way that you, that you said you did. But even that, I would have tried to have some sympathy for the people uh, with whom that was not the case. And I remember you saying this in 2014. I have not listened to a note of KISS music since then. On the rare occasion that a KISS song will come on the radio, I'll change the station. And my wife, even now, seven years after you made that statement, looks at me in shock. Like, wow, can't you just let things go? And I tell her, no. It's just not the same anymore. This is the way somebody feels about me after I respect him and support his lifestyle to an extent, you know, buying his records, uh, buying the magazines that he's in, buying posters to put up in, uh, in my room. It just doesn't feel right. So that's pretty much what I have to say about being a KISS fan. I was able to defend many of the decisions he and Paul Stanley made in keeping the band together and keep pushing it forward. But that was when I drew the line. And I hope that other people understand this as well. All right. Well, be good, everybody. See you next time.